I started to get into a period of, of old mandom that maybe all the music that I was going to like had already been made. Hello, VC. Plastic Eric here. Plastic Soundwave Cult. Here for another interesting edition of Collection Connection, the game that's just an excuse to talk about music. I play every Monday. My brother plays every Thursday. And his channel is uh, Tremendous Views. Check that out. Now that I fumbled over that enough, let's get into the game. So, my brother's last response was uh, Sarah McLaughlin fumbling towards ecstasy. I found that to be uh, an all right album. Um, I don't know if I'd be necessarily running out and buying it anytime soon. Uh, I do like some of her songs, and actually, the, ver the first song on this album, uh, Possession. Very good. Um, I do like that song. Um, the rest of it, you know, was okay. Uh, you know, I didn't hate it. I didn't, you know, go like, woo. But uh, I enjoyed it. And so as I delved into this album, uh, I noticed on it, like, that she had five different drummers that performed on this album. Um, so I thought maybe there was a connection there. That was a dead end. Uh, another dead end was, uh, it was released in Canada, um, in 93, but it was released in the U S in 1994. And one of those drummers actually on the album, she ended up marrying, but I think we kind of maybe covered that before, but I wasn't positive. And so in doing this research, I found out a very interesting thing about that song, Possession. Sarah McLaughlin was sued by an Uber fan saying that she wrote that song based on letters that he had exchanged with her, um, you know, over time up to that album. And I say Uber fan, but that's really just code for a stalker. And, um... In the end, it was found out that, uh, you know, the case was dropped because he admitted that he was a stalker and he basically said that it was just an excuse to get closer to Sarah McLaughlin anyways. But I thought that was interesting about being, you know, band being sued by a fan. So I looked it up and there's plenty out there. And uh, there's one band that seems to have been sued a couple of times by uh, fans. And that would be... Guns N' Roses. And uh, now, uh, the one incident that I know of where Axl Rose from Guns N' Roses was sued is he threw a microphone into the crowd uh, and hit a fan. And uh, the fan sued. Uh, and what they what they tried to compromise with, and I can't remember how the, the suit ended, but um, one of the options was was to give the guy a, the microphone that he was hit with and have it signed by Axl Rose. But the guy said, unfortunately, that doesn't, you know, fix my nasal cavity. So, um, that was one, and then there's the famous one where Axl Rose jumped into the crowd and went after a guy taking pictures. Um, but uh, other than that, that, that's, you know, my tenuous connection there for to this album. Because um, this is the only Guns N' Roses that I have. I don't have the big one. Uh, I'm still looking for GNR Lies on vinyl, which is hard to find. But I've lucked out and gotten this one. And even though this is Guns N' Roses' worst-selling album, 
I still think it's pretty good. Uh, I like all the versions of the covers that they do. I think they sound pretty cool. Uh, they cover The Damned, Soundgarden, Stooges. Uh, God damn, who else? Stooges, Nazareth, Fear, and another controversial thing is, is there's a hidden track on this album uh, that was written by uh, Charles Manson, and uh, it's hidden. They It actually comes on at the after I Don't Care About You. Charles Manson is never credited, as far as I know, for the song on the albums. Uh, they did go through some controversy on this. Um... They said it was just their young, you know, unabashed, dark humor. But uh, it ended up being that uh, any proceeds, I guess, that go for that song, they they do, they were going to pull the song off of this album. But what they ended up doing was, was keeping it on, and then that money goes to the victims of Charles Manson's family. So, uh... That's what that is here. Again, this is a really rare album. I, I'm already way over five minutes. I'm just going to do a little quick label porn. Geffen. And this actually originally came out. I think they only did one pressing of this on vinyl. Uh, in the States, I should say. I don't know about anywhere else. But it came on this orange vinyl. Um, so it is an original that I got here. And... Uh, I got this thanks to a very, very gracious friend of mine who didn't give two shits about it, but I did. And uh, I'm glad I got it from him because it was uh, a really good album, I thought. Um, so yeah, Guns N' Roses, The Spaghetti Incident. That's a whole other story about how this thing got its stupid name. Um, and so now that I'm way, way over five minutes, I'm going to pass it on to Bryce and and uh, see what he could do with it. And I thought that this was not a bad connection. I thought it was pretty good, right? Because we haven't really done this one yet. So uh, until next time, I will hope you all realize that what I'm about to say here is it ain't all about the music. So I'll catch you later. Say bye to Tim Tim. Tim Tim, say bye. Bye, Tim Tim. Bye.